Well, hello everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm back here. I know I've been a bit spotty lately, but I really, really, really wanted to do this video specifically, even though I missed the day it was supposed to be on. But if you've been around for a while, you know that last year I did a one year reflection on YouTube. Uh, and, and this year, I think it's January 15th is my channel's birthday. Uh, I, just missed my, I missed my two year one, basically. I missed it by like a week. I was going to do it on the day, but I was lazy and focused on my 100 day spy video. But now that's done. Now it's out the way. I have so much to talk about. Uh, I'm really excited to get back to uploading uh, regularly here again. I've missed it. I love it. I've just gone so, so distracted with my 100 Days Spy video. I, I guess I can talk a bit about that. This one's going to be a bit more casual, a bit more laid back. Just going to do one take of this and talk about some things. As I was flying yesterday, I was flying in from Melbourne to Canberra uh, after I saw Barbie and Oppenheimer in Melbourne with um, some of the like Misfits people. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> if you don't think you watch this channel, but thank you, Ryan, for flying me down. Um... And now I, I was flying in from Melbourne to Canberra. And when I find whenever I fly, I get, I get quite existential. Uh, yeah, this will be a slight tangent. But this can kick things off. Uh, if you don't know me, you wouldn't know this because not many people know. I don't know why I started saying it by that. But I have always had like a fear, not like a really strong fear of heights, but I've always kind of been, kind of been skeptical of heights, right? Like I, I'll be like at a cliff and I'm like my legs go all jelly which is probably just the natural human response but like a bit more than that I kind of look over like ooh. And if I'm even if I'm on like a tall building and like I can look over and it's fine like there's a glass in the way or something I'm still like ee. and part of that has always been since I was young I've been so I've had the same thing with flying I'd never not fly because of my fear of flying but I'm always like man I could so die <laughs> This <laughs> shit could crash, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's like so irrational, even though it's safe to be flying than to be driving, even though it's like one of the safest means of transportation now, it's so safe, it's all regulated, it's only one, it's very rare you see a crash or anything like that. I always had this irrational fear in the back of my head, like, damn. I think it's because when you're driving, right, if you're driving, at least you have the facade of control. You know, you're behind the wheel, so you're like, oh, hell yeah. But if, if something goes wrong and you're like, I don't know, 30,000 feet above the sky, you kind of like, it's, it, it'd suck. Basically, it's, it'd suck. And I, anyway, what I'm trying to get at here is that I've always had like a fear, not like a fear of flying that would stop me from flying, but I'm always like, damn, if something goes wrong, that's it <laughs> type of thing. But I know it won't. But So I get existential when I fly, right? So I was listening to, what was I listening to? I think I was listening to OK Computer by Radiohead. And I just started writing down some things. I was like, shit, I didn't do my two years YouTube video. So I'm going to start writing down some dot points. And I've written a lot of stuff down. I've written a lot of stuff down. I want to talk about it with you. I want to make some reflections, and I'm actually going to talk about the th thing I wrote down last, or second last, first, because I think it's actually the thing that still blows me away. Um, I've been doing YouTube for two years. I just want to let that sit. Two years ago today, or well not today, two like two years and a week ago. My life was so different. And I know I talked about this in the last song. I'm going to talk about it again because my life's only gotten even more different. Um, two years ago, I was what? I was doing pizza delivery in the suburb I used to live in. I was at university studying something I didn't hate, but I wasn't really that interested in. And deep down, I always knew YouTube is what I wanted to do. That's all I had two years ago. I had my computer. I mean, I had the privilege of being in like an upper middle class family. That's also a very powerful thing I can't talk a bit about. But that's all I had. I had literally zero subscribers to my name. I had absolutely nothing. And just, I can't, especially this year, I've really started reaping a lot of the benefits of being someone with a, an amount of fame on the internet. It still is kind of crazy. Just the act of having something you want to pursue in your head, something you want to actualize, some type of goal that you want to do. And being able to take a step back years down the path and be like, I went from actually nothing. I went from a zero subscriber channel to 300,000 almost subscribers in two years off nothing but myself. Not nothing but myself, but just like the work I put in and editing and like that. Like just from inputting some random numbers and clicks and keyboards into a editing software on a computer, I've transformed it into my full-time job. I've transformed it into meeting the people I still look up to like all these people I, I've looked up to for so long, they're, they're like reaching out to me now. All of this has just been actualized from, it was literally nothing. It was a zero subscriber channel. And this is the first thing I want to talk about the most because I still don't get it. I still can't rationalize this and I want you to understand this, that I am still so much of the belief that I'm not special. 
the buff I have is that I came from like an upper middle class family and I was lucky enough to be able to take a semester off university. My parents were like, it was also because of COVID. It's actually also because of COVID. I was, this was able to work because it was during COVID and I was like, I'm not fucking paying six thousand, seven thousand dollars a semester to look at PowerPoint sort of fucking university. Like I'm not doing that. So I was able to take six months off. I didn't need to get a job. My parents were like, okay, you can have six months to work on this. They didn't they definitely weren't supporting it super big until the money started rolling in, which is fair enough because it is a bit of a what do you call it? A bit of shot in the dark, you know, a bit of stab in the dark, that's it. So I don't blame them, but other than that, I just know I'm not special. The only, you know, the thing I have, you know, the two most important things that happened to me were number one was me making that decision and being able to, and being able to just focus on making videos for like six months. And the other biggest thing, I still talk about this. It feels weird to say it, but was the catalyst of getting my ass broken up with was the two most important things that have ever happened to me. I still conceptualize my life in like pre breakup and post breakup because that was truly the like most important thing to happen to me because it's what got me onto self-help. It's what got me onto like realizing, fuck, I've, I've really fucked things up. I haven't been a great person at times. I haven't been moving the way I want to. I've, I'm, I was overweight. I wasn't happy. My mental health wasn't great. And that was purely the catalyst for everything changing. And I guess I'm fortunate to have that experience. It was like the kick in the ass, which not everyone gets, but I was fortunate enough to get it. And that truly is what just set me on this path for everything I have, which is why I look back with gratitude. And I honestly, the further I get away from it, the more I'm like, just truly grateful for it happening. Like it really did set everything to click into gear that I've needed to do. And that's the only difference, I guess. I was, I just had those two things go my, <laughs> it wasn't really, it didn't feel like it was going my way in the moment when I was crying on my bed for fucking like four days straight. But like, <laughs> um, just those, being able to do those two things are the only thing that probably separates me from where you are right now, because I still do not think, oh, maybe I guess I'm lucky I was addicted to playing TF2 when I was young and had put like 3,000 hours in the game. I guess that's also kind of lucky, but I don't think that's necessarily a barrier to entry because you can just play a game if you want to play TF2 and do TF2 YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But besides that, I'm not special. I'm going to say this till the day I die. I am not special. I'm just, I just have like, I just had enough discipline and enough of a kick in the ass to like set the things in motion, to start becoming more disciplined, to start living by a routine, to start doing all that. And I just don't think what I do is at all out of the grasp of anyone else. I don't think I'm special at all. And I want that to be the biggest thing. I just want you to know that in two years from now, where could you be two years from now? Two years ago today, I had nothing. Two years ago, I didn't do anything. I wasn't even to self-help, right? I didn't. I wasn't on self-help two years ago. You have the benefit of self-awareness and the fact I'm telling you that you have to do this. So now you're like, you, you're liable. You're guilty. You have to do something now. Otherwise, you're a big fuck up and I hate you. Kidding. But I didn't have any of that. And I just, I truly, I, I will always believe this. I don't care what anyone tells me. I, I, I really believe it. That if you, if you actually set your mind and you, there's a, there's a big distinction here. You need to be like, self-aware you need to have some self-awareness to know when you're, the things you're doing aren't good and you need to improve at them but if you have that and you work hard truly hard like deep in your soul you know you worked hard and did all you could i just i will always be of the belief that things will work out for you but if you don't fulfill those two criteria then it, it won't happen and i don't think i'm special i just think i was lucky to get my ass heartbroken and to have uh the parents with the means to like I didn't have to get a job and they, I didn't have to work like that. I could just dedicate time to it. So that was fortunate in that sense. But, you know, maybe if you don't have that, maybe it won't be two years for you. Maybe it be three years, maybe it be four years, maybe five years. But you need to have that patience. You need to have that faith. You need to have all that. So I am lucky in that sense. I'm always going to acknowledge that luck that I have. I'm never going to deny that to anyone. I am fortunate. I grew up in privilege. And I was able to turn that privilege into something I think I've built for myself. I, I'm a Nepo baby, but I'm a, I'm a Nepo baby who went and did something. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, maybe it'll take you longer if you're not as, don't come from as, as an advantage background as I do. It might take another year, you know, you have to work a job whilst you do it so you can't dedicate as much time. Whatever it might be, there is no functional difference between me and you. Whatever you set your mind to, I truly believe you can get. And I'm not saying that to be corny. It is just probably the one foundational belief I have in life that I just, I, I know to be true. Uh, you, can, you can think I'm insane for that, but I truly, I support anyone trying to pursue something more. I hope you guys do. You have the buff of being like hearing my message right now. I didn't have this for two years ago. I kind of developed it myself from getting heart, heartbroken and getting fucked over. But 
I'm giving it to you. You have the, you know, you have the key. You got the keys. Is that what DJ Card says? These are the keys. You know, he's reading Drake's book. I got the keys. Drake got the keys, you know? <laughs> I'm giving it to you. You just got to unlock, unlock what you want to do. That's the first thing I always want to say because I look back two years ago and I look back now. I'll give you something. Actually, you know, I'll talk to you about why it's so jarring, right? Because two years ago, I was a nobody, basically. Not like a bad way, but just like I was just a normal person, right? And now I've met up. I went down to Melbourne, met people like Fitz, Swagger Souls, all these massive YouTubers who I've watched for so long and looked up to are now so welcoming and warm and being friendly and nice to me, you know? Just this weekend again, I went down to watch Barbie and Oppenheimer with them. Thank you to Ryan. Thank you for the flights. He paid for my flights and forced me to come down, but it was still a really good experience. And I'm just like, when you're meeting people like Fitz, Swaggies, people I've looked up for so long, I'm doing a video with Muselk tomorrow. I'm filming a video of fucking Muselk tomorrow. When you have people like Lazy Purple fucking DM me after he watched my full 100 Day Spy video. Emp Lemon again DM me about my 100 Day Spy video. When you have all these interactions, I just, it's still, I still feel, this is, I told this to a friend. I still feel deep down in my heart like the little 14-year-old boy who is co- you know, he's all cozy and snug in his bed on a Saturday morning in winter watching YouTubers. I think deep down, I still feel like that. I still I see these people reaching out and I forget that I, I do make videos and I still kind of, I'm kind of like, you know, my fingers are touching with the, the, the pleading face emoji like, oh, oh hi. <laughs> hi, it's me, Maxo. And I assume that will go away with time, but for now... It just feels so surreal. I can't believe. If you told me I would be here in two years, I'd probably say you're bullshitting maybe like five years. But the fact that's happened so quickly, I just... It's crazy. It, it truly is crazy, the perspective. Um, it blows me away. And I don't think I'm special. I, I truly think anyone could do what I've done. I'm not special. I, so that's the, that's the biggest thing I want to start off by saying. Is that it's crazy how much your life can change in a short period. And it's crazy what you can do if you say your mind to it, which is all corny as shit, but it's true as fuck. It's real. Real sees real. That's the first thing I want to say. Now, the second thing, I'm going to go to my notes here that I got whilst I was flying. Um, this is probably the biggest shift I've had. And part of that I've realized, especially with this latest 100 Days Spy video I put out, is that I think the most important thing to me now is mastery. By far, it is mastery. I always want to push myself to be better at what I do. Every project I try to one up in some way, whether it's the writing, whether it's the editing, whether it's the voiceover, whether it's whatever. But I've really just become so obsessed with mastery. And I say this because I've been working on, I literally worked on this 100 Days Spy video for six months or seven months even. And every time I release the video, usually I'm like elated. Like I'll always be elated or something. I love finishing a project and putting it out there. But this time with my 100 Day Spy video, it was like the least, even though it is going to hit a million views and be my, it's growing faster than Bing so right now, which is crazy. I haven't really cared about the external validation response from it. And I, I wouldn't expect to say this. I, I, I've been sitting there getting more views than I ever had. So many nice comments, so many everything. And this is the first time I kind of sat there. And it's not, of course it's nice. I'm not saying it's not nice. I love it. It's nice seeing a good response to a video. But the first, what I've realized is that I really don't care as much as I used to. What I've realized is what makes me the happiest. Wasn't the f- last week where I've had the video out or four days, five days. It's not seeing all the, the ad rev. It's not seeing all the views and subs come in. You know what the first thing I thought of the second I uploaded that video was? It's time for 100 Days of Sniper. Because I truly have realized that I'm just in love with the process of making and the direction that gives me and how satisfied and fulfilled I feel doing that. That's what I chase. It's not, of course, to some extent, it has to be the payoff. I, I need I need money to live. And that's all nice. The views, I'm never going to deny it's not nice. I love all that. But what I'm realizing is I'm my most happy. I'm my most fulfilled. I have my most direction and purpose. When I'm climbing that mountain, when I'm working on the video, I'm spending 100 days. I'm going to start it probably sometime this week, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, when I start my 100 days of Sniper. That's when I'm most fulfilled. I I, I just, I actually can't believe it. The first thing I thought of, I think maybe that night I was like, fuck yeah, the video's out. Hell yeah. But the next day, I saw it was number one on my YouTube list. I saw it was performing insanely well. The first thing I thought was, okay, 
I need to plan out 100 days of Sniper. Because I just love the process of making and being on that. And that's the thing I'm so happy to say about two years after starting YouTube is just... I love my craft. I love the craft of video making. I'm excited to push it elsewhere. It's not just going to be TF2. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on moving in different directions on different channels. And I just realized I... I just love making videos. It makes me happy. It makes me smile. I like being able to entertain people. I like being able to work on something and, and have people like it. I, I just love making videos. And I always want to be climbing that hill. I always want to be pushing for more. Pushing to be better. Pushing for something more uh, ambitious. This spy video was crazy. I think it's probably... I don't want to say I'm boastful. If you know me, I'm not that boastful. But I, I think barring Lazy Purple's... Um, how it feels to play a series, which I think he said he took he spent a thousand hours on the demo man extras in the main video. I think a hundred days of spy was probably the most ambitious TF2 video ever made. I'm not saying it's original because it of course came from like that hundred day format. I'm not saying it's the most original or novel, but as far as time invested into a project and how long the video was, it's the first of its kind to be that long and that high quality the whole way through. It was really ambitious and that's what makes me happy is kind of trying to push myself to release stuff like that that no one else has touched like who else is mentally ill enough to spend 300 hours playing spy over like 100 days all well, those minecraft videos that they do 100 days one day isn't isn't actually a day it's like what 10 minutes of minecraft time they're spending like like no, no one cares i actually spend 100 real world days three hours every day doing what i did and i'm proud of that i truly am proud of that that i was able to stick through that and I really like pushing boundaries in that sense. I like being ambitious like that. I like working on videos like that. Excuse me. That's what makes me happy. And I really want to keep doing that. I'm not sure if I might get stuck in this loop of constantly trying to one-up myself, which could be very dangerous for my mental health. But <laughs> where it is now, I just... I love being on that climb. I love working on the videos. I love that process. I love mastery. I just want to get really, really good at it. And that's all I concern myself with. And it makes me really happy. It's kind of a beautiful thing once you find what you love to do and just being able to work on it. And I'm fortunate that I found that my passion's always been video making, like literally since I was like, since I was like, fucking, I don't know, 10, maybe younger, I've known I've wanted to make videos and it's always just been the thing that stuck out to me. But yeah, I just, I love being able to work on that every day and get better and better and better. And it's been crazy the last two, this year especially, how, how much my channel's blown up. I think I made my, live, I made my last one year uh, video before Bingsway came out and I was still, still and just ever since Bingsway came out it's been like next level growth on this channel it's it's crazy to think about and even though I've been growing so much I'm happy I can just say it's not the, the numbers that do it for me it's really just working on videos every day that I love truly love it I hope you can find what you love I know it can be hard in this awful world we live in where everything sucks and our attention spans being robbed by short form content and we're in a we hate our jobs we hate the system we live in and i know it can be challenging and i was fortunate to know that video is what i wanted to do but i truly hope for whoever's watching this you can find that thing that you you love to do and you can get really good at it because i think that's that's when life's most kind of beautiful is when you find what you want to do and you just get really good at it i think that's that's what we should be living for living with purpose like that you know what i'm saying so i'm happy i've gone to that point with videos um, and it kind of undermined what I just said. This is one where I'm going to get a bit more vulnerable. Look at this. You're going to get a full experience. Look at all your new subs from my video who came and actually followed the channel. I'm going to get vulnerable. Uh, this is what I've realized a bit more this year versus the last few years because my channel, I think I was at 60k subs when I did my one year one, and now I'm at almost 300k. Uh, this is one I still need to remind myself, even though I've known it the whole time, but because, you know, when you get more views and more eyes on you, you also just get more hate, which is fine. I, I should expect that. But one thing I've really realized this last year, especially, is that people will hate you literally no matter what you do. It, it's just going to happen. There's going to be a select percent of people. And I don't mean just to be corny and like they're not valid. But sometimes people who hate on me are fully valid. Like the criticisms are criticisms I see in myself. So I'm not saying that they're wrong. But man, there's just a group of people a small cut of people who no matter what you do, no matter if you spend 800 hours playing Spy, they're going to be like, this shit sucks. And that is just how it goes. <laughs> uh, I've definitely gone thicker skin over my time making videos and I've only become self-aware about like like my how thick my skin is recently. 
and it's getting a lot more thick i feel like i'm kind of more just more not caring because once you, when you concern yourself with mastery you don't really care about the negative stuff but like i'm not gonna say it. i can totally get past it it still gets to me sometimes when i see shit like that but like damn you could fucking you see with like mr beast he like he cures blindness in 100 people and like people are like yeah but this is a systemic failing but that blindness can happen like this if we had to socialize government and the health care and like oh, you might be right about a few things there but dude it's just mr beast being philanthropic like come on can we just say like you know what he did a good thing by like curing a thousand people's blind it's kind of like that it's like no matter i'm not saying i'm curing blindness here but no matter what you do people will find a way to critique it people will find a way to undermine it and that's okay some people are just cynical and pessimistic and i don't think that's a great way to live your life but if you are that's i'm not gonna stop you but you just gotta realize some people like that you can't let it get to you no matter what you're gonna get shot on because people are cynical i think of this kind of thing if you're australian i don't know if this is popular outside of australia but in australian culture there's this popular thing we call the tall poppy effect and it's this idea that everyone's kind of happy with your successful your success like kind of up until a point you know kind of people want to bring you back down when you're the tall poppy the small poppies want to claw you back down it's like crabs in a bucket same type of thing like that's sort of like you know you can be successful up until a point and we're going to pull you back down i think it's kind of just a human psychology sort of thing is that rather than seeing someone be successful and i'm not sure i'm not trying to say this in like a burst way either just i'm trying to explain it. i just I, i'm just trying to I hope you know i'm humble but i'm just trying to say like when other people see people being successful the first response isn't always damn good on them i appreciate that for a lot of people it can be underlying jealousy and what's easier than working and working to try and reach that level of success when you can just do what's quick it's expedient you can just tear them down to bring them down to where you are you'd be like no this sucks this is bad I think that's kind of a semi-natural response for some people to be pessimistic and cynical like that. So I get, I, I get where it comes from. That's why it doesn't really affect me. But man, if you plan on going to something that involves making videos, making music, doing something creative, putting yourself out there, having public, being like vulnerable to the public and public perce- perception, you're gonna, you're just, you're gonna, you're gonna get shit on. You just, it's just innate. I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone who's not gotten hate, even if they're, I don't know. Kendrick Lamar making the best to be butterfly one of the greatest sounds of all time and you're still going to see on no conservative commentators be like I, I don't I, I do not like what he said there even though this may be one of the best pieces of music of the 21st century I do not like him because I'm going to hear the politics of it and be like this is bullshit I hate I, I, I hate black people <laughs> you know you get some conservative commentators just kind of dog whistling that they're racist but no matter what you do I, it makes sense though because creative stuff is subjective everyone has their own taste everyone has their own opinion um so fair enough i'm not judging but i'm just saying i've realized at points especially like like six months ago i'm trying to think like a year ago when i did my last one when i'd been doing youtube for like a year i think for like six months after that i was particularly concerned with what people thought of me and i still am to an extent i'm still working on it but there was a there was a period there where i was really self-conscious and cared what people thought but the more i do this shit i'm like nah nah you just kind of got to do what you want to do there's sometimes if there's constructive criticism that's always welcomed i love that but some people just hate i know it sounds sounds corny and cliche but truly you you just you just you you gotta just fucking block it out it's not serving you at all it's just it's just gonna happen so that's one thing i'd say if you're trying to look to go into something creative where you have to put yourself out there um people will shit on you it's innate uh you just kind of have to deal with it and the more you deal with it the thicker your skin will get so that's what that's another important thing i've realized the next thing i want to talk about is one sec the next thing i want to talk about is i don't even know why i wrote this down this is more just a life thing versus youtube but it's one thing i think it's important to remind yourself but there's this clip you've probably seen i feel like it's big on youtube shorts where i think it's david goggins is on the joe rogan i want to say he's on joe rogan and it's that quote where he's like you know when you die you go to the afterlife you sit up to heaven and you're at the gates you're at the pearly gates the clouds are there and god's right there uh and oh gee let me remember this specifically i think he's like and you told and god's like what, what did you do with your life you know what, what was everything you did and you start listing it off i did this i did that i did this i did that and then god kind of just stares at you he looks at you and he's like but that's that's only like what 10 percent of what you were supposed to be and he looks back and starts listing off all the things that you, were, you could have been. 
everything that you could have done everything that you could, that you could have fulfilled and, and try to go out and achieve and i think goggins talks about is that being the biggest regret it's just living life getting to the, you just have to kind of I'm, I'm, all, I'm all over the place right now what i'm trying to say is humans we're not good at visualizing or living for the long term we're, we're quite impulsive we're quite short term so we kind of fuck ourselves over and not realize it just to get to feel like shit in the long term and what I mean by that is, you know, it, it's kind of easy to do the expedient thing, the easy thing, the instant gratification thing. And we don't really care because it's hard to visualize the future and conceptualize the long term. But one day, I hope I'm not the first person to tell you this, but you're going to die. Ah! That's my scared dying sound. But um, yeah, one day it's, it's all going to be done. You're going to get to a point where there won't be any time to kind of like amend and make make amends to, to work on something to, to change yourself you're gonna reach a point where life is finite and it's gonna it's all gonna go away and we're humans so we struggle to kind of conceptualize that but it's important you remind yourself that that's what the stoics will talk about of memento mori you will die one day you need to live with that in the front of your mind if you want to accomplish everything that you want to do because i think we can forget sometimes that our time on this planet is finite when we lose a minute, we've lost that minute permanently. That's never coming back. And you do, you need to remember that. Because I think the worst thing that could happen is, you you know, you know, death's coming. You're like, all right, well, you know, you, you're just conscious of the fact you, you don't have much time left. And I would hate to live with regret. I'd hate to be going through the regrets in my head. And I guess to some extent, there'll always be regrets because it's like an opportunity cost of pursuing something. If you want to pursue making videos, well, then you want to be the best at making videos. Well, you're not going to be able to be able to pursue music and be the best at making music at the same time. You know, you have to forfeit something. So if there's regrets in that sense, they're not really regrets. They're more just like, what ifs? But I don't want to live with true actual regrets when it when all's said and done. Of like, oh, I wish I, I, I went on that date. I wish I asked that girl that. I wish I, I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I, I don't want to live. I want that to be as small of a list as possible. And it's an important thing to remember. Um... With this YouTube thing, I'm like, I need to give it my all. I'd, one day, I'm not going to be making videos. I'm going to have my legacy on the... I'm going to be like LeBron Game 6. His legacy's on the line. And I'm just going to be like, I want to show... I want I want to do the best that I can now. I want to leave the videos. I want to leave all that. To show the people I tried my hardest. I put my heart and soul into everything I did. I tried to be the greatest that I could be. And I want people to know that. And I want to, I want to look back in the future and be like, Young Max, you did a good job. You really did put your whole effort in that YouTube thing. And you couldn't have given it any more. And that's the mindset I want to have. So remember that. Memento Mori. It's a popular one. It's a lot of people get tattooed. I might get tattooed at some point, to be honest. Because I think it's a very good reminder to have permanently. Because it's all going to come. It's all going to go away one day. And the last thing I want to do is be on my deathbed with regrets. And that's an important thing to remember. That is a very important thing to remember. Uh, the next thing I'll talk about is... And this is very biased to me, but... One thing I've also very realized is that there is so much fulfillment to be had in suffering. This comes from a very kind of privileged spot, I feel like, because some types of suffering can just kind of suck and you don't learn much from them. Well, you can learn from them. I think you can always learn from any type of suffering, but it's kind of a privileged position to be in where I like, like voluntarily endure types of suffering, like whether it be working out, whether it be, I don't know, even something sounds like reading or meditation where it's not fun to do in the moment or if it's doing a challenge video, these are all kind of like privileged forms of suffering. So I get where the counter arguments could come here, but in general, uh, I've realized that putting yourself through the discomfort, the hardship, the pain, the suffering, it's like, it's the yin and yang. You put yourself through that, that hardship, there's proportionate good at the end waiting for you, whether it's working out and there's the getting jacked, feeling good about yourself, being healthy, whether it's for me, doing 100 days of spy like an idiot is the payoff of making a banger video and enjoying the process of doing that. I've just more and more realized that suffering and 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 the pain of just pushing yourself through something uncomfortable is necessary. You need that discomfort to grow. You need that discomfort to be fulfilled. You need that discomfort to be challenged and just constantly trying to push forward. It's necessary, and you shouldn't shirk for you shouldn't you shouldn't hide from it. You shouldn't shirk that kind of feeling. Uh, I'm not shirk's the right word. You shirk responsibility. You shirk. I don't know. You shouldn't run away from that discomfort. 
you shouldn't run away from that suffering within reason. Don't just go out like literally harming yourself. That's probably stupid. But when I say suffering and pain, I mean in the context of something that's going to grow and uh, make you a better person. Um, I've just realized, yeah, the more you put yourself through that, the it's just the more you'll get out of life, I feel like. You need those proportional lows, those proportional highs, you know, to get those highs, to get something abnormal, to get something um, extraordinary, you can't do what's ordinary. You have to put yourself through the suffering, the pain, the work, the discipline that 99% of people aren't going to do. And if you're willing to do that, then guess what? There'll be a proportional reward at the end of it because you're one of the few people who's willing to suffer like that. That's kind of saying, I know some people might disagree with that and I don't blame you because I think it does also come from a bit of a privileged position to say that because there's certain types of suffering. Like, I don't know if you're just like kind of like hungry because your mom is working at three jobs and your dad left you and she's trying to raise a family and you're just, you're hungry and you're suffering. That kind of pain is not going to have like the same payoff as like something voluntary of like working out. I think there is growth to be had in that. I think kind of like that, just that perspective of like living paycheck to paycheck coming from a low material standpoint, a low socioeconomic status. I think there is a lot to be learned from that. And I think it can potentially be a super valuable thing. But if you get my point, I'm kind of talking about the more voluntary suffering you can put yourself through, not like the actual hardships of life like that, which are kind of just like, it's kind of hard to find fulfillment in that. That's more just fucked. And it can give you a good perspective. There's a lot you can take away from it uh, if you have the right mindset. But I get what I'm saying is privileged. Like, oh, put yourself through the pain and suffering when there's people who are like hungry on the street. Like, well, they're going through suffering and not getting much out of it. So I am conscious of that, but I just mean more generally, you have to put yourself through that short, short-term short discomfort if you want that long-term gratification. Have to work out, you know, have to put yourself through hours and hours of working out every week if you want that body. You have to sit down and play 100 Days of Spy if you want that banger video at the end of it. You have to sit there and meditate 10 minutes every day if you want to have that mindfulness, you know? It's innate. You have to have it. There's the yin and the yang. If you want that good, that disproportionate good, you have to have that disproportionate bad. You have to put yourself through that suffering. And you can enjoy that process once you kind of get to a point where like where I'm at, you kind of enjoy the process itself uh, in the suffering, um, the hardship, the challenges like that. That's what becomes meaningful to you. But I think the more I look at life, the more I really, I view it like that. I think in general, not for everything, but the more you're willing to hold, endure, persist and push through, the greater the reward because not everyone can do that. That takes a lot of discipline, fortitude, uh, resilience to do that. And I think that's one of the truths I'm kind of learning about life and I've learned that through YouTube too. Especially with challenge videos, I feel like it's especially analogous for me is that like, I realize if I'm willing to spend, sit, play spy for three hours for a hundred days, no one else is willing to do that, you know, but I am. And I, I take pride in that a little bit. And I just realized, yeah, if I'm willing to suffer like that, guess what? You can have a fucking banger video by the end of it. And we did, and I'm really happy I did. So I kind of think of it in terms of that. So I think of it in terms of everything, but I think suffering, not all suffering, but most suffering is a great way to learn and grow and you shouldn't run away from it. Even if it's hard, uncomfortable, that's where you grow the most as a person. So that's something important I've learned in the last two years of YouTube. Uh, and what else have I written down here? I think, I'll talk about this last thing. This is the last thing I've ever wrote down. It's not one of those vulnerable things. And this kind of also sounds contradictory. This is just my stream of consciousness. So it's not all coherent and necessarily consistent. But one thing I've kind of realized about myself through YouTube in the last two years is that I always feel like I need to prove myself. But I don't know what to anymore. This is a profound thought I had whilst flying I've kind of realized, I feel like there's this permanent chip on my shoulder. And I used to be, I used to be at a point where it was at, you know, when I got, when, um, I got broken up with and I was very sad and I was like, fuck, no, I am not, I'm not, I'm going to make the most of this. I'm going to, you know, stick it to my ex, you know, I'm going to be like, I'm going to make the best person I can and that type of shit. So I kind of understood it then when I had a chip on my shoulder. But now when I've just moved past that so much, it's not something I really think about anymore. I'm kind of like... I'm confused. I still feel like I have this chip on my shoulder that's never going to go away. And I'm not sure how much of this is something that's come up from being as a young person. I don't know if I've had some formative experiences that have just made me felt like I'm not enough, like I always have to prove myself. But I've really realized a lot of my self-help, I really, I'm, I'm fixated on this idea of mastery and greatness, but like, why? Why do I have, why do I feel so strongly about this? What's, what's, what is the chip on my shoulder? Who, who is making me feel like this? Who am I trying to prove myself to? And I don't really know. 
it's just something self-aware I've noticed about myself is that I always feel like I need to push myself and be better. Uh, and I wonder at what point will it be enough? Or will I always be like this because I just, it's just innate to me. And I think it kind of is, I'd lean towards the fact it's innate to me. But like, I kind of feel like I, I'm always out to prove myself. I always feel like I'm not enough. I always feel like I need to be more than I am to some extent. And yeah, I've just become conscious of that. I always want to make the best video I can to kind of like prove it. I want, oh, like I kind of, on some level, I want that respect that's associated with that. I want to prove it to myself. But I always feel like I'm out to like, I always feel like there's, there's, there's that chip on my shoulder. I don't know who it is to these days. Maybe it is to myself. Maybe it's just something internal innate to me that I always want to be the best I can. But I feel like I'm always trying to prove myself to someone. I'm trying to be as successful as possible. Trying to do as much as I can. And I thought that was something interesting. I don't know if anyone feels the same way. And if you do, I think, I feel like if you always have that chip on your shoulder, it might not be the most healthy mindset, but it does really drive you. I feel so driven to always prove myself. I just don't know what to. And this is probably something I should go to therapy for. Can we get a W in chat for therapy? <laughs> but yeah, it's an interesting thought I've had lately. And I think it's a good way to finish this video off is that on this channel, I do talk a lot about becoming great finding fulfillment, finding purpose, improving, being the best that you can. And I guess I've never unpacked it super deeply about why. And I'd be interested to see if you, anyone else has that similar feeling of just feeling like they have to prove themselves. They have to be good. It's, I feel like you're not, I don't say I don't feel like I'm enough. I have like that baseline of humanity I see in myself. of like, yep, I'm a human being. I on some level, I'll always be enough of just as who I am. But then part of me is also like, well, no, if I'm not progressing and I'm not becoming a better person and making the most of my, this life, then do I really deserve to feel like happy? That sounded really dark. I didn't mean that dark. I more just meant like, if I'm just some bum ass leech parasite on society, you know, <laughs> actually, no, I won't get toxic. I'm trying to get very pointed in the examples I was going to use, but if I'm just some like bum ass, low vibration, you know, not exercising on TikTok all day, scrolling all day, not doing anything, smoking weed all day, just sitting there and doing nothing. Do I really deserve to be like, how, how can I be happy with myself if I'm like that? That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. I, I'm just, I don't understand. Not that you should hate yourself if you like that. You shouldn't hate yourself at all. But I'm just saying like, how can I feel fulfilled and like I'm worthwhile if you're not doing the things that make you worthwhile and happy and fulfilled. Like, does that make sense? I don't want to sound like I'm too harsh, but I feel like I have this deep internalized belief that it's never going to be enough. And I think that's a good in many aspects. It might be bad in some, but I just, I feel like I'm trying to prove it to someone, but I just don't know who it is anymore. I think it might be myself. Maybe it's wholesome. Maybe I'm just trying to prove to myself that I am. I can do the things that I think I can. On that level, I'm, I'm trying to prove myself. But yeah, that's what I've been thinking about lately. Maybe people can talk, comment their thoughts. I don't sound like I'm too harsh there about like, I do I do feel like on, on a baseline, everyone should be happy with themselves. Just like they, they, you shouldn't hate, actively hate yourself no matter what you're, what you're doing. But I also feel like there could be some requirements along with that. You know, like I feel like it's kind of, it, you can't really love yourself if you're not taking the steps. If you're like actively killing yourself, you know, if you're, you're eating junk food all day and scrolling TikTok and just rotting away, like it's kind of hard to love yourself if you're, actively hating yourself in what you do it feels like incongruent how can you have the the mental happiness and the mental like kind of that, that, that mindset that you should be have self-worth and stuff like that when everything you're doing and the action you're putting in the universe is suggesting well no i don't respect myself and i treat myself like shit so i think there's a bit of that to it too but i really realized i just have a chip on my shoulder i used to know why i had it i used to have it i used to just want to like kind of prove it to myself like after being fucked over, I was like, no, I am worthwhile. You know, I'm trying to prove myself in that sense. Oh, that's my doorbell. But now I'm kind of like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And there's some food for thought to leave you with. Maybe you have some thoughts on that. Maybe you can, maybe I need, maybe El Maxo needs therapy. Can we get an El Maxo needs therapy in the comments? But anyway, that's, that's all I want to talk about. That's, that's everything I've learned in the last two years of YouTube. It's everything I wrote down. And Yeah. Uh, that's all I've got to say. I'm really happy my 100 Day Spy video is out. I've got so many big projects coming planned. I've got a Muse Elk video coming soon, which is going to be really, really exciting. Uh, a lot of big projects. 100 Day Sniper, I'm going to start sometime this week. And 
yeah, that's that's everything I got to say. Just remember, anything you put your mind to, I genuinely think you can achieve. I don't care if anyone tells you you can't. They're a fucking pussy ass bitch. Don't listen to them. But that's all I got. I'm gonna get back to weekly up- up- uploads on this challenge. Oh, on this challenge, <laughs> my brain's rolled that much. Everything's a challenge. I'm gonna try and get back to weekly uploads on this channel. And I hope there's been some value in the things I've talked about here. I hope I can. Hope it helps. Hope it lets you rationalize things a bit differently, think about things differently. And yeah, I'm going to get back to it. So thank you for watching this far. It means a lot to me. And you know what I'm going to say. I hope you're doing well. And farewell, Elite Level Gamer.